Well, welcome along to this Thursday edition of Super League Raw News, the 18th of April, just 24 hours away to round number eight of the Bet Bread Super League. There's only one place to start. Richie Myler, the new director of rugby at Hull FC, has given his first interview. But before we get to Richie, I had the pleasure of interviewing Mark Applegar for our latest In Conversation. Let's hear what he had to say about Richie's appointment before hearing from the man himself. and wish him well you know yeah. as you said there you, yeah. you're not going to wish anyone ill for getting a job because no. ultimately if you're out of work or you, you're looking to get your um, your first steps on ladder you're not going to say no to a job like that are you uh, Hull FC's uh, I mean Hull in general is just rugby mad isn't it and as you said it's a bit of a bit of a goldfish ball in terms of whether your team's doing well or not you know and um I wish him well, I genuinely do, yeah. but yeah, I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't surprise me, but, you know, you, you hope he goes well in it, um, you know, it's uh, a big job, a massive job in fact, because I think Hull's got a lot uh, of problems that need solving, um, and, you know, the director of rugby, in my eyes, the director of rugby is not only in charge of that, um, you know, that first team branch in signing that, they've got to bring the whole uh, rugby operation together. And I know Hull, Hull's got some of the best youngsters about at the moment. Yeah. Their academy's, yeah. you know, on the verge of producing some some real top quality talent and how they go about, you know, nurturing that talent into into the first team and signing the right players with the right values, um, you know, for what Hull is. It's a massive task, because I'll be honest with you, if you'd have asked me when, let's say, Radders and Lasty were at Hull, what is Hull FC? I'd be able to tell you what Hull FC player was. You know, I'd be able to tell you what the traits were, uh, what they were known for. I, c- I couldn't tell you that at the moment. I could not tell you, um, you know, what a Hull FC uh, player or yeah. what the Hull FC club is known for at this moment in time. That's just my honest opinion. <laughs> I think a bit of calmness. I, I, I'm a very calm person. Um, I think that's the way I played. I, I don't. I, I'm not a person that makes rash decisions. Uh, and I, th- I think just a bit of a bit of calmness to the situation. Quite clearly, we're in a, we're in a tough spot as a club, and w- we need to be better. Um, over a period of time, the way we've recruited and the way that we've we've built a squad um, and the way that we've we've pulled together has probably been a bit fractured. Um, we just need to solidify that and, and bring everything in together and, and go productively in the right direction. And I think that's my goal is to try and drive that and bring everybody together. I feel I can do that and like I outlined my plan to Adam that I felt would, would work. And, uh, but ultimately together is the only way that we can go forward and that's what I'm looking forward to do. I think my 18 years of experience of being in the rugby environment, being in a very high pressured environment at some very big clubs that I run really well um, and, and being interested in and I've been a student of that really I've listened to every meeting and I've, I've listened to every CEO and, and really just been a sponge of how they've done it and how they've run it I mean Gary Evington was, has run Leeds successfully for a very very long period of time and I've picked his brain on numerous occasions of how that they've been able to sustain um, a business model and that, that's ultimately what they've done they, they've they've been self-sufficient for a long period of time and successful as well so that 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 kind of model of, of building something that's sustained and and successful is is the balance that I'm trying to get the, our young players are going to get too exposed if we don't put some experience around them and that, that, that there's no shine away from that now in this market it's not that easy there's a semi-final coming up for four teams that don't want to release any of the players and loan them out to us and all that kind of stuff going on. So we're not going to just jump in um, and bring any player in that's not a right fit. I think that's been a fault of the previous regime and just bringing players in to fill a gap. Ultimately, we need to get the head coach right. Um, Obviously, Simon's going to do a great job for us in that role, but we need to identify exactly who we want um, and go and get that person. I think that that is the, the critical point for the club at the moment because then that will then give us the direction we need. There's no point us going and signing a player 
that the head coach plays a different style to. I think the most fundamental part is getting the head coach and that and the staffing right around that so we can build from there. So that's my number one priority. Obviously, it's a clean slate. If, if I'm being totally honest, yes, it's not been good for the first eight rounds. It's not. And, and that, is, that is factual and that is where it is. However, like I just said then, there's so much positive going to happen for the club that if you want to be a part of it, it's what you do between now and then that will define if you're here or not. And, and I think it's almost... It's a drop the shoulders, it's take a breath moment and go again. And I, and I believe that the boys will buy into that. And I believe that the people that want to be here and, and want to do the, the badge justice and to, and to be proud to, to play for Hull, um, I think the fans will get that. And I, and I truly believe that they will, they'll buy into what we're trying to do here. Years. Well, ultimately, yes. But I, I also understand the frustration. I, I mean, I would, I'm frustrated and as, as well the whole club is. And I understand that... You, when you don't understand what direction the club's going in and you, and you don't get the identity that you're trying to deliver on the field and you, and you don't get why and the growing frustration comes from the playing group, from the fans, from everybody. When, when that starts to build, it is, it's a, you can understand why they're not here and why they don't want to come and watch your team lose. Um, however, if we can reconnect with that and we can bring them into this conversation so they understand the vision that we're trying to do and understand the progress we want to make as a club, then I'm hopeful that they buy into it and I'm hopeful that they support the team because, like I said at the outset, the only way we solve it is together. Um... It's a fascinating interview. That's just a snippet. Uh, once you finish watching this news update, head over to Hull FC TV on YouTube and catch the full thing. Uh, Myler agreeing with Applegarth in part of his interview, saying about the identity of the team. What type of player are they looking for from fullback right the way through to lose forward? I mean, there was little hints there that he wasn't too impressed with perhaps some of the signings that were made maybe by Tony Smith. Were they the right ones for Hull FC? There's a lot of interesting comments there and I'm sure uh, other journalists out there are going to really carve that one up over the next couple of days in terms of what Richie was talking about and what his aspirations were. But there's one thing for certain. He's not writing off 2024, but there's a clear focus in his message to you, all FC fans, that it's going to be 2025 that he's working towards. He sees a massive future uh, for the club, but you're going to have to be a little bit more patient than you've already been. Uh, he, talking about his credentials for the job, he's a student of the behind the scenes in the boardroom. That's basically what he said, that he'd never wanted to be a coach. He's always wanted to be in that, you know, uh, that, that position above it all, being able to organise it all from academy right the way up to first team. You know, we wish him well. Uh, it's a massive, massive task. There's a lot of scepticism out there. A lot of people really uh, very surprised right across the spectrum, whether it's a fan, all the way up to coaches, all the way up to other CEOs. This one has really caught everybody by surprise. But yeah, you know, he's in situ now. We wish wish Richie Myler well. And like I say, go and catch the full interview. We had to start there, didn't we? And of course, as you saw, Mark Applegarth's uh, in conversation, that's going to be free of charge for you all this coming Wednesday, next Wednesday, that will be uploaded to all of our podcast channels and a webcast on YouTube as well. Like we've said already, the Super League is back. This is where we left it in round number seven, the Dragons top of the shop with the Wolves just behind them. Then it's the Warriors still with that game in hand, Robin Saints and Giants in those key top six positions, just the Broncos looking for their first win of the season. This is the fixture list that we're going into. The Rhinos taking on the giant, the jewel of fate, as I have called that one. Oh yes, don't worry about that. Massive game for Rowan Smith. The Warriors take on the Tigers in a repeat from this weekend's Challenge Cup quarterfinal. Then it's Saints against F FC. Wolves take on the Leopards. The Broncos host the Red Devils and the Dragons uh, take on the, of course, Hull KR, the Robin. So, you know, really interesting games on the horizon. I'm going to start with this one. Uh, the Wigan Warriors taking on the Casper Tigers. That Challenge Cup final, uh, quarter final, you know, 60 points to six. An absolute disaster, that one for the Tigers. They're sitting in 10th this season, uh, you know, going up against the Warriors side that are third. One to a thousand on are uh, the Wigan Warriors. Let's hear now from uh, Craig Lingard and also from Patrick Mago ahead of this game. Some real honest conversations uh, about our about our standards and what's not acceptable, and um, you know, there's there's certainly some things that, that that are going to change this week in terms of personnel because it's what it needed. Um, the games that we've had this year, they've been the first three games have been really positive parts in every single game, but the Huddersfield game weren't acceptable by any standards, and and we've we've made the players know that, and the players know that themselves. 
And if the performance isn't acceptable, then things have to change. So there's people that are, that are dropping out of the team this week. There were guys that dropped out of the first team and played in the reserves at Huddersfield on the, on the Saturday. And I thought that attitude and application, the performance were outstanding. So them guys, them guys are getting rewarded. They're coming into the first team. So the players that are dropping out know that if the performance isn't good enough or the, their application and the attitude isn't good enough, they're going to drop down to reserves or go out somewhere else and play. And that's that's the standards that we've got to develop. And we're going to have bad days in the season because of the, the makeup of the squad that we've got. And, and that's just how it is. And we've got to deal with that. And it's about coming through the other side of the week after and making sure we don't replicate the mistakes we made the previous week. Uh, Kane Rob will be Kane Rob will be in the in the seventeen. Uh, Brad Martin will be in the seventeen. Sammy Kabul will be will be in the seventeen. Um, George Hill, uh, who, a young kid that we've that we've got who's on the on the fringe of the first team, played really well in the in the game on Saturday. So he comes in as eighteenth man, and we're rewarding people for the effort and and, and how they perform and, and their attitude. And you know, so I can't sit there as a coach in. In a team meeting um, after the, what we just took last week against Huddersfield and pick the seven, same seventeen players, it can't happen. You know, there's got to be consequences and there's got to be rewards for people that do the right things and do the things that we're asking them to do. And the guys that have done that are being rewarded by playing this week. I think we're doing good as a team. Um, we've really worked hard in the, uh, in the off season, um, and I really think that it's uh, really paying off. But um, yeah, like you said, it's only eight rounds in, and we still got a long season ahead of us. So. Um, won't get too complacent and uh, too comfortable. Uh, we've still got uh, things we need to win and our uh, games. It's probably my best start I've had in my career so far, but um, I'll put it down to um, uh, just a bit of sacrifices in the off-season. Um, you know, I know I need to work on uh, uh, some things, uh, uh, my diet and my fitness as well. So um, I was going, uh, didn't go back home uh, in the off-season uh, last year. Just so I can really focus on having a good preseason, um, and yeah, I really put it down to that. Um, look, yeah, just grateful for how I started, and yeah, like like you said, um, like I said before, it's only the start of the year as well. Uh, it's still a long season ahead, and um, yeah, we need to put my best foot forward uh, from here on out. Fantastic interviews, of course, available on Wigging TV and Rugby League by James Dayton. Go and check that out on Facebook. These are the squads. And as you can see, Mike Cooper returns to the squad for the Wigan Warriors. He was outstanding, wasn't he, in that World Club Challenge. Uh, he's in for Willie Isley. The only change that has been made, of course, Junior and Semba also expected to play big minutes now in the absence of Willie Isley. As for the Castleford Tigers, just a 19-man squad for them. And I'm real key on look at that number 13. No, Joe Westerman. That is a massive blow. Also, no McShane as well. They really are going to have to do this very tough. Lewis Johnson's not there. Sylvester Namo he, of course, is suspended off the back of that challenge against Willie Isa. But you will see there, Lewis Senior has come in to uh, join his brother, Sam Hall, and Liam Watts are back in the squad. But there's no doubt about it, Castleford really are in dire straits, aren't they, in terms of their match selection for this one. Can anybody see, anybody see anything other than a Wigan win? It's very, very unlikely, isn't it? Let's be absolutely certain about that. We've already heard from Richie Myler. We've already heard as well from Mark Applegarth and his in-conversation reference at Hull FC. Let's hear now from inside the camps ahead of the game at the Totally Wicked St. Helens against Hull FC. Here we go. Talk specifically about Saints in a second, but as an overall, how sizable is the task facing you and Francis at the moment? Oh, it's a big one at the moment. I mean, I don't have to go through the names. We know who's not available. Um, but again, trying to be positive with it. We're going with what we've got. Some young blokes are going to get another opportunity again this week, and in the long, in the end, they'll be better for it. In the minute, it's, at the minute, it's pretty tough for them. Um, Saints are obviously a great team um, and we've got a few more tough ones coming up as well but again we just want to get to where we can be proud of our performances and, and making sure we're on the same page and, and making ourselves difficult to beat is the priority in the short term. What's it been like uh, the last few days after Sunday? Oh, it's, been, it's been a tough few days, uh, you know that's for sure. Uh, for a bit of soul searching to, to, to do and obviously a huge disappointment being knocked out of the cup and not only just being knocked out of the cup it was just the, the manner of the manner of the de defeat as well uh, so yeah we've you know we've spoke at length as a group you know it's not quite the people talk about crisis meetings it's nothing like that it's 
an honest conversation with an honest group of players around where we need to get better. Uh, so it's about us now put, putting that into action. You will know on the inside, obviously people will talk and, and people will get to know certain things and that's the word culture. How was it on the inside? Was it, were the questions, were the issues from certain players about how things were run, about how certain players might have been behaving? Did you have concerns yourself within the camp? Look, I, it, get, I don't, it gets thrown up all the time, like the culture is horrible at, yeah. at all I see. And that's why I wanted you to... But what, but why is, it, what, what is it, why is the culture bad? Why, well, to me, a bad culture is when you know, things are horrible, bad people are on the place, it's a toxic environment. I just don't see that. I just don't see that in the playing group. We just haven't performed on the field. Um, whether we've got enough as a, as a whole to, to do that, but what we have got enough of is we have enough level of self-respect that we need to go out there and, and, and make sure we commit to each other and, and have a go for each other. Whether we've got the, the quality and the ability to go and beat Wigan, St Helens or not, I feel we have, but if we don't, then all we can ask of each other is that we'll give our everything to, to each other and, and to the club. Um, and I just don't see where it always comes from, this 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 horrible culture and this toxic environment. Um, but that's what we're labelled with, and the only way we change it, unfortunately, in sport, is results. Now, if we're winning every game, all of a sudden we've got a great culture and it's not toxic anymore, so no, we've got to go down that route. I, well, I want us to play with the patience. I, uh, I want us to have a work ethic and energy and an intent about uh, you know what we do defensively. I think you know they're, they're three things that, that we were missing on the weekend, and three things that, uh, if, if I'm honest, the longer the game went on, the worse we got. So uh, we in the past have lost games, uh, but like I said earlier, the manner of the defeat was was what was the most disappointing. So we we need to bounce back. That's exactly what we need to do. So again, those interviews available in full, head over to YouTube for the whole FC ones and of course Saints TV for the full Paul Welland press conference, you Saints fans. These are the squads and of course three changes have had to be made by uh, Paul Welland going into this one. Matt Percival back for selection. Will he be get, will he be giving his head in this one with those uh, HIA protocols? We'll wait and see. But he is back in the squad. Matty Lees is back after his two-match suspension. That's timely, of course, with Alex Wormsley out now with a hamstring injury. Sam Royal also steps into the 21-man squad. Out go Jake Burns and T. Ritz. And as for Grix, four changes for him. Danny Houghton, we just heard from him there. He's back from his rib injury. That's a big one for, for FC. Denise Banforth, he's back. Maka Harmon and Jalen Hodgson, the quartet that They've gone out is Liggy Sow, Jack Brown, and of course, Hoy and Brown, who have left the club. I mean, not many people can see this, my apologies, can see a win coming here for the for the black and whites. Nobody can see that. You know, Paul Wallace's his team will want to bounce back. I think some of the uh, comments that have been on social media around Saints have been totally uncalled for. And if the rumours are true that Wellens' his family has been targeted off the back of that Warrington Wolves uh, win, then whoever those people are, they're certainly not saying telling supporters they really do need to have a long, hard look at themselves. That's totally and utterly unacceptable. Everybody would expect Saints to bounce right back in this one. I certainly do. I think, uh, again, it's a, a really bad time to be facing the Saints but like so it happens so many times you know when a manager of a coach goes out and a new one comes in there is a reaction will we see a positive reaction from Hull FC will we see Saints still you know not in uh, not in the best of health. Who, who knows? I mean, I mean personally, I thought Warrington uh, played brilliantly in that game, and they're still not getting any credit. It's all about what Saints didn't do. Sometimes you've just got to say that. Yeah, okay, I get it. Saints might want to have their time again, but Warrington put tremendous pressure on Saints Ellings in that game and fully deserved the win. Um, don't get much uh, praise coming out of the totally wicked, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. But I do expect Saints will win that one. Right, the duel of fates. This is the big one for me on Friday night. This should be a really, really good game of rugby league when the Leeds Rhinos take on the Huddersfield Giants. This, of course, is how it looks. I mean, uh, Huddersfield come into this on a three-game winning streak. That brilliant win in Perpignan in the Challenge Cup. They will be right up for this. Of course, the last outing for Leeds was that defeat against the Warrington Wolves, we said, in Super League Royal Weekly. This is a big game for Frawley. He's going to start standing up sooner or later. But last year, the two games at Henley both went the way of the Leeds Rhinos, uh, you know, 18-17 and 54-0. That was a shocking day, wasn't it, for 
uh, Huddersfield Giants that day. Let's listen now from Rowan Smith, uh, uh, Justin Sangari, and also from the men at Huddersfield Giants, Luke Robinson and Joe Greenwood. Certainly on the back of um, some disappointing results. You know, I think uh, the last game where it was it wasn't um, wasn't our strongest performance of the year, clearly, um, but we were in the battle for a good period there at 16-8. We have a try disallowed, and you know it's a decent arm wrestle that second half that could have gone either way. And you know as we've seen in some other fixtures as well, they can get away from you a bit when you're chasing points. Uh, but we certainly do want to play better for longer, um, and we want, we need to sort of show that from the start, get going well, and and you know we're playing against an opposition that are in you know, really, really good form. Um, so it's going to be a, a great battle, a great contest and something that we, you know, we feel like we it's it's good timing for us to be playing a, a team that's in form. As, um, they've always been really tight affairs, obviously a local derby, isn't it? So they're always, they're always uh, close fought contests and yeah, over the, you know, the recent history, they've been really good games to watch. So for the neutral, it'll be a really good game for to watch. And I'm hoping it's not, I'm hoping it's a slider, you know, landslide victory for us and we win by 50, 60, but, I think history dictates it's not going to be that, it's going to be a, a tough game and one we're ready for. Uh, yeah, I think they will come with the confidence, but the thing is uh, you can come with uh, all the confidence you want. When you come in the Edding Stadium, it's uh, every time a, a war and we know uh, every time when the like, Catalan, when they came here, uh, they come with the confidence and we show them uh, Leeds Rhino, we're proud and uh, we can beat them. So it's going to be the same for, for others field, so they have to come and get ready for the war. Yeah, obviously it's given us a massive boost, you know, to uh, go over there and uh, like Robbo said before, we have, a, we have a good record against them over there and um, obviously they're at top of league, they had a good win against Saints the week before and we knew we were up against it. Um, but, but for us to come out on top and to put that score line on them was... Uh, it was, was great for the group and obviously give us a lot of confidence going into this week. But um, I feel that obviously we can't get complacent with that. Um, we've got Leeds who are, they've had a week off and they'll be um, identifying us as a team and where, where, where they can sort of try and um, get us, you know. So we have to be on our game again and obviously that game's gone now against Catalan and we move on to Leeds. Very impressed. It's a tough place to go. Um, obviously the conditions there, it's much warmer than, than here as well. So adapting to that. Um, and they, they're, they're a good team and they're always very hard to beat. Um, they, had, they had a few sort of kick tries and stuff go their way, but they were, you know, they outplay Catalans who have been the sort of the dominant force of the Super League so far. So um, we, we know what we're coming up against and they're a very consistent team um, and they, they know what they're about. So, we, you know, we've got to shut them down, but also we've got to throw some, throw some stuff at them to, to um, try and get some fatigue into them. Massive game this one, I feel, for the Leeds Rhinos. I mean, Tony Smith has gone from Hull FC. You do feel that if Rowan Smith didn't win this one, especially against Huddersfield, a massive pressure bit now on the shoulders of Rowan Smith. That Warrington Wolves game, a lot of discontent in Headingley uh, during the course of that match. This is a real, real battle on his hand now as Rowan Smith. He's got to get his charge. He's playing some quality, quality rugby league. He's got the tools to do it. As you can see there, David Fusser to a back. Uh, that's timely, of course, with Ash Handley uh, now out of the squad. I mean, he's out for the foreseeable, isn't he? Also, James Bentley and Tom Holroyd, you'll see that they're not included in the squad either. They have not got past the HIA protocols. Justin Sangari is back. We heard from him there. Leon Ruan and Tom Nicholson Watton, he's in the squad as well. No James Donaldson as well. For Huddersfield, they're in pretty good shape, it has to be said. Jack Murchie, their big absentee going into this one. Of course, Still no Chris Hill, etc. But Ollie Wilson does return from HIA. They go into this game in fine, fine fettle. And of course, off the back of that Catalan result, they will be feeling pretty chipper. It's got to be said, going to Henley. Do not count out Huddersfield Giants. I think this is going to be a gem of a game on Friday night. Really, really looking forward to it. I've called it the jewel of fate. I do feel that this is a big game for Rowan Smith. He needs to win. That's absolute mandatory for me going into this but I think also the Henley Faithful will want a win of substance as well it's going to be very very intriguing indeed as for Huddersfield well if they can carry on playing the way they played against Catalan in Perpignan they could just about go there to Headingley and get the W themselves it is going to be absolutely fascinating I really can't wait for that right let's move over to Saturday now and and the game that is going to be taking place in London and as you can see London better good news they've had some torrid 
torrid injuries, haven't they? But Sadiq Adibaye, he's back, and that's big for them. A little bit, uh, you know, a bit more solid now in those central units. And uh, as you can see, Hugo Tisson there, who's coming from the Catalan Dragons, he's straight into the squad. Lee Kershaw, Jared Bassett, and Jordan Williams missed the game against Sol Kayawi Man and Ox, but they also are in the 21 man squad for London. That's really good news for them. As for the Salford Red Devils, well, you'll see there Gil Dudson, uh, still on loan from the Warrington Wolves. He's back in contention after his calf uh, calf injury. Kai Morgan uh, returning from a loan spell uh, of his own at Rochdale Hornets. He finds himself in there as well. But you'll see that uh, there's some notable absentees. No Sam Stone. He's a massive player, isn't he, for Salford? He's not in the squad. David Nofaluma, he's still not there. He's unavailable for this one. And Amir Burra, he's got a one match suspension that he has to serve. Fascinating game. Uh, it's one that I'm sure the London Broncos will feel as if, you know, they've got a half a chance. These are the type of games that if they are going to pick up a win this season, they will fancy it, especially off the back of the Casper Tigers turning Salford over the last time around in round seven in Super League. I mean, the bookies have it 10 to 1 for London to do it. 1 to 25 on is Salford Red Devils to win this one. But yeah, it's a massive, massive game this uh, down in London. We wish London well. We wish both sides well. It's going to be very interesting indeed to see if this is the game that London get the win. Right, let's now go over to what is going to be a mouth-watering contest at the Halliwell Jones Stadium as Lee Leopards come to town. They played each other twice competitively last year and both won on home soil. It's second against ninth, two to 11 on Warrington, four to one the Lee Leopards. Uh, before we take a look at their respective squads and the ins and outs, let's hear from Adrian Lamb. They've been awesome. Uh, they've been unbelievable. You know, we've even a really difficult uh, away game last week in the Challenge Cup, and losing the Challenge Cup is, is you know, was, dis was disappointing and, and certainly take a little piece of me as a coach um, and, and knock me around a little bit on the weekend because um, it, it's one of those things that we wanted to, to, to defend and hold ourselves because it was a, such a great moment for the club and for the fans. And But the way that our fans have been uh, turning up for our home games, you know, selling out against against Wigan, our last home game here was was unbelievable, and and we care about them and love them as well, mate. And and I think we've got the best fans in Super League, so you know th we're very grateful of them. Um, they understand our situation; they're right behind us, and and again they'll they'll ride through this with us, and and they'll see the good times coming soon as well. Absolutely expected that the Lee Leopards fans, as always, will travel in numbers to the very near town of Warrington. As you can see, back is Paul Vaughan for the Warrington Wolves. That's a big one for them. But Sam Burge is saying in his pre-match press conference that he's likely to go with the starting lineup from that win against St. Helens in the Challenge Cup, a place on the bench for Paul Vaughan. Such is the form of James Harrison, fair play to James Harrison on that one. Good news as well uh, in this game, uh, as you can see there, for the uh, for the Lee Leopards, Robbie Mulhern back in the squad. That's a massive one. They were not expecting Robbie Mulhern to be back this quickly. So him and Tom Amone, they will be in the front row, you would expect, unless it's a bluff from Adrian Lamb. He's been known to do that before now, of course. The inform Yamala Hanley, he'll be on the wing alongside Josh Charlie on the other side. We know that perhaps it'll be Zach Ardacre at fullback. Will he put Moylan there? Moylan didn't look a, a fullback, did he, in that Challenge Cup uh, quarter final? Will it be Zach Ardacre and Chamberlain putting at the centre? That would probably be my preferred with Moylan and Lachlan Lamb in the centre. But there's enough quality there for Lee Leopards to go and spring a surprise. Don't don't not count out the Lee Leopards in this one. They will give their all against Warrington. They've been very competitive all season. We said this on Super League Raw Weekly. Warrington cannot afford to take this game likely. I'm sure they're not going to. It's going to be a fascinating contest at the Halliwell Jones Stadium. The game of the week this week, it has to be, doesn't it? The Catalan Dragons taking on Hull KR. The 30-minute analysis show, that will be coming to you this Friday tomorrow. Okay, that is a big one uh, for you to, to tune into. A 30 minute deep diamond analysis show catland dragons taking on the robins join us tomorrow uh, keep an eye out on our facebook page youtube channel that one will be coming to you before that game though let's hear from willie peters and tyrone may who's going to be up against his former side i uh, yeah i feel i feel like we could have, i personally could have started better a few games there at the start of the year where I kind of felt like if i was in a bit more control or just yeah, just thinking a bit more than you know. Probably could have scraped a, couple, a few more wins, but um, progressing well. Uh, last couple of weeks we've we've started well. Obviously not against Lee, but um, 
yeah, I feel like we're, we're gelling well as a team and I think, you know, we've played a good 40 minutes here and there, but uh, we're going to need to knuckle it down to a, an 80 minute performance, especially coming up uh, this week against Catalan away. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's been a he's been a great um, recruit for us. Like he's yeah, what he what he brings uh, on that field. Um, obviously it's 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 evident uh, people can see, but it's what he's bringing in, in team meetings and around the place. Um, you know, you put Tyrone in any competitive environment, and it brings the best out of him. Um, he gets bored if you don't. So we're just going to make sure that we keep uh, make sure everything's competitive for him. Uh, but yeah, he's been a, you know, a great asset to us. Um, um, he's, he's, he's a different character. He's, he, he knows himself. Um, he's a strong personality, and it's what we needed in that position. And, and he's doing a great job. I just think the the way they've been going about their business. Um, they're a well organised uh, team. Uh, I think a lot of the core players have played together for a while now, and uh, they got a good young crop of French players coming through and they've obviously shown their depth uh, against Warrington a few weeks ago and again against Saints so they are uh, yeah they're always there or thereabouts and the last few seasons I was there was uh, similar. Wait, they're, they're a physical team uh, you, you know what you're going to get when you go over there so it's um, there's going to be no surprises you, you, you know we, we know what um, especially after last week what Catalan's team will, will be playing against this team um, but again mate I think I always go back to it but look if we if we can control what we do and, and have a consistent sort of game like we have or start you know that's important for us um, then then we'll give ourselves every every chance and I think you know when we played them here last, last year uh, it was a game that was you know, it was a good ding dong, and, and we got them in the back end. Uh, you know, we've played well that first game. We had a lot, a lot of HIAs over there that first game. I think there was four, four in total. Um, but that's the performance I believe that changed our season. I was really proud of last year. The second, the second time we went over there, we were well beaten from the start. Um, so there's certainly some some positives to take from from what we've done over there before, and and get our learnings. But as I say, just just go over there and be us, and see see where that takes us. This one's a mouth-watering contest. Two brilliant teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Tom Johnston, well, he is uh, back for the Catalan Dragons uh, and he replaces Frank Maria for this one. And just look at that, Robin side. Oliver Gildart back in the 21-man squad. That's going to be interesting to see who uh, will he find himself back in the centre positions alongside Petr Hiku or will Opacic remain? Sam Luckley is also back after his one-match penalty notice. And look at that there. George King, the number 10, in contention after recovering from his knock ahead of schedule. Ben Reynolds also returns to the 21-man squad. As for Jesse Sue, he's out after picking up, of course, the suspension. He's not going to be there. And, of course, Louis Senior, he's uh, gone over to Castleford. Corey Hall and Reese Butterworth also missing out for the Robins. It's going to be a brilliant, brilliant game, that. Watch the Warrington one and then watch the big one in Perpignan. Catalan against Hull KR. It's round eight. It's the Bet Fred Super League. That has been the Thursday night edition. The Thursday night. The Thursday edition of Super League Raw News. We will be back on Monday with all of the fallout from the weekend's action. Do not forget, in the sheds will return. Game of the week tomorrow. 30 minute uh, in depth analysis of that. Then it's, of course, game of the week. Uh, so I'm getting confused. I'm that excited. It's, of course, going to be in the sheds. That's throughout the weekend for you. The final whistle podcast. Podcast. That'll be available for you to listen to on Monday. And of course, Super League Raw Weekly, as always, will be back live on Tuesday. Super League Raw, you can't beat it, can you? We'll be back on Monday with another news update. Enjoy your rugby league. Get to the game. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.